Making hair using hair cards is one of the most requested videos of this channel. So here we go. In order to make hair using hair cards, we obviously need hair cards. There are a lot of free ones out there, but they're mostly dog. Come on. So in this video, we're going to make our own hair cards inside Blender. So you can use it anywhere in your future projects. But if you're too lazy to do that, don't worry, I got you. I already made a big pack containing full set of hair cards in more than 10 colors. I also included different type of eyebrows, eyelashes, and all of them have normal maps, alpha maps, and even a hair root grow map. So you can create these type of hair colors with few clicks. And if you're not satisfied yet, I made a hair system where you can make your own hair cards pretty simple since it has all the geometry nose options in the right side. You just have to toggle the settings and you have a nice results like this. This is also included in the file. You can download it on the link below. Let's do it. Add a plane. While it's selected, shift A again and in the curve, add an empty hair. Control tab and go to sculpt mode. Select the add hair tool and in the curve shape option, change the length to something like this. If you want to do short hair, maybe don't increase it too much. Then click two times on each side of the plane. There are three ways to start making hair cards. You can use the OG particle system, geometry nose and the blender ready hair assets. I'm going to use my own system that I made in the geometry nodes. You can download it for free from the link in the description. After you downloaded it, go to file, append, and after you found the file, go to node tree and import main hair. While the hair is selected, go to modifier properties, click on this icon and change it to main hair. Now the roots should stick together, don't worry. Drag out a new window, change it to geometry nodes from here. Now here's the system I built. Move to the right and find stick to mesh section and select the plane as the object. After that it should be fixed. Now we have this system to work with. I explained the whole system in this video if you want to check it out. You can change the amount of hair from this node, then spread the hair from here to cover more areas. Change the amount of points each curve has from here for a smoother curve and clump the hair strands together from here. We can also give it a random length using this node right here. We can change the thickness of the hair strands from here and one of the most important ones which is noise to add some irregularities to the hair strands. All the important nodes are colored differently so you don't get confused. If you have too many hair strands you can delete it from here without having to touch any other notes. Curl is too obvious and you're not done, at least I hope. And the roughness is similar to noise but applies randomly to the hair strands to create more realistic look. Again, all the important notes are colored. You don't need to touch any other notes. For the first one, I'm gonna make a really light and less dense hair card. So let's leave the hair amount on two. Increase this value to spread the hair and make them distant from each other. If you're not happy with the hair placement, control tab again and go to sculpt mode. Choose the slide tool, click and drag the hair to somewhere else. To see the hair strands better, we can turn off show overlays, then hold Z and go to material preview. The hair is too short, so let's increase the random length to something like this. And a really small clumping by changing these numbers. To see the thickness of the hair strands, we need to go to render settings and while it's on EV and the curves menu, change it to a strip and subdivide a few times. It's a way too thin, so let's increase the hair thickness from this node right here. This is the thickness of the root. Moving on to the curve, let's increase the curl scale until it looks similar to this. It depends on the type of hair you want to go for, but I think this much curl is good enough. But if you want to make it more curly, just increase the resample curve so it has more room to bend. Rotate it 180 degrees on X axis so it faces the bottom. This makes it more like hair falling down. So it's better. Okay, I'm happy with the light hair card. We can now move on. So let's select the plane and the hair, shift E to duplicate and press Y to move on Y axis and place it at a reasonable distance from the previous one. In the geometry node section, let's name it very light hair density. Then click on this icon to duplicate it. And after that, name this one light hair density. You see the hair is still stuck to the first plane because of this stick to mesh node that is still set to the previous plane. So let's change the object to the new plane. And now it should be fixed. Then go back to the hair amount section, then increase the amount for more dense hair card. You can change the noise or curl to get different shapes of hair strands. Do your best to avoid having similar hair cards. Now let's duplicate again and just like the last time, duplicate the material too and name this one medium hair density. Don't forget to change the stick to mesh to the new plane. It's basically the same procedure. Just increase the amount to make it denser, mess around with the clumping and other settings, then make it a bit curlier if you want. Duplicate again and name this one high density density hair. Do your thing until it looks really dense and heavy because we need this hair for the more crowded part of the hairstyle. You're free to add any amount of hair card you want. You can make it even denser than before or even add more curl or noise. It's totally up to you. I personally added some low density hair cards which has high amount of curl just in case I need it later for the more realism. Okay, let's move on to the materials. 
after you assign a new material, shift A and add a curves info node. This node is essential for hair because it gives us a lot of cool features. First, to give it more contrast and make it more realistic, we can add a mix color node. Connect the random to the factor and mix color to the base color. Now we have two colors throughout the whole hair that is spread it randomly. We can change the color A to brown for example and drag and drop onto the color B and make this one darker. Now it's not flat anymore because it has way more contrast. This way works really well in Eevee, so make sure you do that. This method also works really well for making the hair gray. Just make one white and the other one black. Add a color ramp in between and drag the handles like this until you're satisfied with the amount of white hair in the black ones. Now if we want to give it a gradient, we just have to delete the mix color. Connect the color ramp to the base color, then in the curves info, connect the intercept to the color ramp. Now we have a gradient color throughout the hair based on the length of the hair, really important. You can give it different colors or make the starting point black to show the growing roots. For a smoother transition, we can change the linear to cardinal or if you want to make it sharp, change it to constant. Another thing we can do is to connect the tangent normal to color ramp and give it a black and white color. Now if we zoom in, we see each hair strands has a shadow around the edges. Move the handles until it's more pronounced and visible. We can render this and use it for ambient occlusion map so your hair strands stand out more. Whatever hair color you've chosen, it doesn't matter. Let's render it. Hold Z and go to rendered view. Add a light to the scene in front of the hair. It's way too dim so increase the power and also the radius so we get more areas covered with the light. Maybe keep the light at a distance from the hair so we get an almost flat lighting all around the hair because as you know it's a texture map and shouldn't have baked light in it. Now press 0 to switch to camera. Press M to bring up the right menu and in the view tab enable camera to view so we can move the camera. Hold alt and rotate the camera to lock in with the front sight. Select the camera and go to camera settings. Put the type on orthography or leave it on perspective but increase the focal length so much that it removes all of the perspective distortions. In the output settings change the resolution on until it fits your scene. Make sure to get a high resolution render to get more details later on. If the object has started to disappear, go back to camera settings and increase the end. If you see only some parts of it lit and the other parts are too dark, Duplicate the existing lights and place it in front of those hair strands. We gotta make the background transparent. Go to render settings and in the film tab, enable transparency. Don't forget to disable the visibility of the planes. It's really important. Now get a render with cycles and save it somewhere. We're gonna use these to make our normal map. Search up normal map generator. You can use any app or website you want, but I always use this one because it's easy, which usually comes up first. Click on first image on the left and open up your rendered image, preferably the ambient occlusion one. It's GPU based. So wait a few seconds and it generates the map for you. First change the model to plane and disable the displacement. Then zoom in really close until you see the hair strands. It's way too harsh so mess around with the strength and level. Once every hair strands is visible, click on download and you should have a normal map that looks like this. To show you how it looks in Blender, I assigned a new material and brought one of the hair cards I just rendered, brown one for example, connected to the base color. It's a PNG so we can connect the alpha to the alpha and it removes the background. It's already looking pretty nice and realistic, but if we wanted to make it look more like an actual hair, we need to add the normal map, add in a normal map node and connect them to the normal map. It's way too intense, so I lowered the strength. Now hair strands have depth and you can see individual hair strands. Just watch the difference, with that normal map it only looks like a reflective surface and right after we connect the normal map it gets much better and that's it go ahead and make any type of hairstyle you want using these nice hair cards i'm gonna make a hairstyle using these hair cards in the next video subscribe so you won't miss it again if you want to make your job much easier you can download my hair card pack from my gumroad page also there are much more things about character creation in there that you might want to check out hope you found the video helpful and i'll see you on the next one peace